getting ready for my next project I'm piling on with the rest of my projects I have this porch on the back of my house and for years I haven't really utilized it much other than to store stuff like stacking up lumber and whatnot so I've decided I'm going to enclose this in basically it is about 12 foot by 13 foot I'm still going to leave this existing door in place that goes into the house and I'm going to have two doors inside the porch I'm going to have an entry door coming up these steps so we'll have a 36 inch wide entry door here I'll have a window a double window here and then in each of these bays double windows there and there over here we're going to have a single window and then a French door that would allow you to go out into that section of the yard. So it's going to create about you know, 150 square foot of extra space, multi-use space. Probably going to utilize it for woodworking. Already got some tools out here. Looking forward to getting this closed in. Okay, so I started out on construction here and I discovered my first little minor issue these posts when they had this built I believe well something is out of square uh, these posts were out of plumb by a little bit as you can see this is where the post was sitting in order to make this thing plumb I had to kick it in back towards the house same thing pretty much down the line so they were all slightly out of plumb probably to accommodate this front edge of the concrete if you look down the edge, this edge seems like it maybe blew out the form a little bit, so it bowed it out. So right now, with these posts plumb and my sill plates laid out, I start out with a two inch gap down here, which goes down to about a one inch gap down there. So I've been racking my brain, talking to some friends, trying to figure out what to do in this situation. Um, I don't particularly want to build the wall out of plumb, because there's going to be windows in this wall so I think what I'm going to do I have scribed the line down here this concrete's already pitched away from the house I'm going to take a diamond cup wheel on an angle grinder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bevel on the edge of this concrete to step it down just a hair of course I'm going to you know use caulk and weather sealants and all kinds of stuff to prevent any wicking of water up into my into my wall but for an extra safety measure, even though we got a soffit over here, I'm going to take that grinder out and bevel this down a little bit. Just, just to have a little extra reassurance if any water is driven in this way, when it does make it to the concrete, it's going to want to roll off. So I have my line scribed. I'm going to go get the grinder set up, face mask up, and uh, get busy on this. As for what I'm going to do when it's all done, if this is really bothering me for some reason, I can see where the concrete bows in over here and you can also see that this is already flaking off anyway so what I might do is I'll come back later because this stuff's peeling off anyway and I will put like a skim coat of like a stucco finish on the front of this thing here to kind of finish it out and then I could cheat I could cheat the stucco a little thicker down this end and taper it away down there to just try to make this look a little less obviously out of line like if i bump this out maybe an inch three quarters of an inch and go down the flush over there it, it, it you know i think it'll look all right all right well made my decision i'm going to stick to it Okay, it wasn't so bad. It went a lot faster than I was expecting. Uh, as you can, I don't know if you can see it, but now we have a nice little bevel. In the event when any water comes down, hits, it'll roll off. I'm gonna put some weather stripping and caulk and all sorts of membranes and whatnot, but for the extra five minutes of grinding, it was, I think, worth it. So, that's what we're looking at here. I 
found the center of my opening, which coincidentally is not the center of this post, so I'm glad that I checked. So this is my center. So then what I did was I divided that in, you know, from center to the edge in half, which then found my center here. Okay, so this is going to be the center of my window. My window is 60 and a quarter inches wide from the flange to the flange. So I add an extra half inch to give me 60 and three quarters so that I have about a quarter inch of play on each side. There's These are new construction windows, so I want the nailing flange. I need to make sure the nailing flange, the nail holes will hit wood. So I, that's what my tentative plans are. I kind of laid out where the stud's going to be that goes up the outside. I believe that's called a king stud. Uh, that one is going to be the outside and then there'll be a short one that holds the window sill up inside here so I've located the anchor say you got to be at least four inches from the edge of the board to anchor and then no more than six feet apart so this one I'm going to put in here because I have my four inches so I'm going to keep that one closer to the edge and then the other dimension, dimension they said was 12 inches from the edge, which would put me out here somewhere. So I'm gonna keep it at four here. And then down on this side, this wound up being a little bit closer because that post isn't in the center. So I don't have my four inches here. So I just came over to nine inches. That should clear my studs framework that I need here for the window. And then I'll have my redhead anchor bolted right through here to the concrete. So I'm going to look this over once again, double check my measurements, and then I'm going to, after I double check the measurements, I'll uh, start drilling some holes. Okay, I popped the uh, sill plate back down and I drilled through just to mark where my two anchors need to go in the concrete. The uh, redheads say that you need to have a minimum of inch and seven eighths embedment, you know, and you need to go a quarter inch deeper. So I set the stop on here to allow for about two and three quarters into the concrete I'll have down. So that should give me plenty of the embedment I need, and the top of the anchor should sit flush with the top of the sill plate. So I got my stop set, so I just have to run the bit down until the stop hits. <laughs> Okay, after you're done, you'll want to make sure that you blow this hole out to get any dust out of the bottom. So I'm going to get an air compressor and take care of that. But basically, that's all the instructions set on the redheads. So I should be set to uh, get this thing nailed down. Okay, this is the sill gasket that's got to go in between to make up for any irregularities in the bottom of the concrete. Uh, also, will help backing for the call. All right seal this all in keep bugs out they only had the wider one in stock of course so i'll put this on and then i'll just trim it down Pretty snug pretty fast. I don't think I'm gonna put any more in the center. Um, the allowable distance on this is six feet apart and I'm five feet apart right now so I think that's just gonna that'll be good enough. All right rinse and repeat I gotta do this a bunch more times. Okay so I'm back at it today. What I got done yesterday I have my top plates all screwed in around the whole perimeter and then my sill plates I have those all fastened down my openings are there for uh, the doors everything's anchored with the sill seal underneath I laid out I started to lay out for my studs to go in 
it was too windy yesterday the game thing it was kind of got kind of got crazy it was like 30 mile an hour wind so had to kind of pack it up early so i'm back out here this morning see if we can get a little bit more done well i ran into a little snag yesterday with my framing so what had happened was i had put i'm going to try to get the names right of the studs my king stud was located here okay both here and here i had my kings done um i was getting ready to continue on the framing i phoned a friend to double check and he confirmed that i had my king studs in the wrong spot so two options cut out what i did or modify and adapt and overcome so what happened was i didn't feel like cutting everything out and then it dawned on me that that what i had was the king stud can be used as the uh, jack stud or a trimmer stud depending on what you want to call it so what i did was i just installed the king stud in the proper location and then when i put my header in i'm just going to take the circular saw and cut an inch and a half slot out in the right spot on either side slip my uh header plate across the top and then I'll be right back where I need to be. And then I have my room for my cripple studs to hold the uh, rough sill. So, minor setback. Got a little frustrated. Thought I was going to have to redo everything, but really no big deal. So, this is where we're at so far. Uh, today, um, my goal is to get the rest of the rough framing done. And then possibly put some sheathing on. Because it's supposed to rain later this week. And I have the sheathing. I'd rather it be installed rather than sitting in the truck all right we'll see what i get done today Okay, here we are at the end of day three i have everything rough framed i was shooting to try to get some sheathing on but it just didn't happen that's a two-person job anyway i think so for now i have all my cripples in all my window openings door openings are done went pretty well the cripple studs took longer than i was thinking in my brain i never estimate things just quite right so you're learning that everything takes twice as long as you think it's going to take. But overall, I'm very happy with it. All my door openings came out nice. It's going to be a nice little space in here when it's all, all enclosed in here. Lots of windows. Alright, I'll bring you back when the sheathing starts going on.